In this Cuddly Critters special episode... This one is Milo. That's Milo. He has a boo-boo on the face. He has a boo-boo on the face, that's right. Can Dr. Arvid save a school bunny with a terrible toothache? I'm not going to lie. If it's a tooth root abscess causing this, it's going to be a nightmare. Wow, that face. Chris meets an adorable piglet with a devastating problem. I've seen animals with one leg deformed, but have three like this. It's a big issue. Oh dear. She collapsed and fell off her perch. Happening. Yeah. She's stressed. And can Scott bring this tiny chipmunk back to life? She's my little baby, and we don't know if she'll be okay. You make my world a better place. Come on, there you go. Make a bit of tea. In Twickenham, in southwest London, 34 year old teacher Manpreet <laughs> shares her bedroom with two very unusual pets. Chippy and Speedy are like my babies. We don't have children, unfortunately, so, you know, I've bonded with them. I know, you know, people might think it's strange to have animals and call them your babies, but they really are. You know, they're just so cute, and anybody who sees them, you know, they fall in love with them straight away. Can I sit Mummy's hand? The cheeky chipmunks were a surprise 30th birthday present from Manbreed's husband. Good girl, Chip. Well done. They're a bit like having a cat and a dog. I know them like almost inside out, and they just make us laugh with the, the little silly things that they do. Speedy, what have you found? Is that your hazelnut? When kept as pets, chipmunks can live for up to eight years. But now both these four-year-olds have health issues. Hello, oh, hi, I'm hi, Scott, how are you? Scott, nice to meet you. Which is why Scott is really and newly graduated vet Come Riaz in. are making a special home visit. If you just follow me. Should we close the door? Uh, yeah. They're probably quite uh, fast, I would imagine. Exactly, yeah. Don't want <laughs> Hence the name escaping. Speedy, right? That's right, yeah. So we this is Speedy over here. Yeah. And uh, this is Chippy. They're beautiful. Oh, they are, oh, yeah. Two absolutely adorable little ones. I know. First up for treatment is Speedy. She damaged her nail, and her new nail that's growing through um, doesn't grow properly, so it's um, quite long now, oh. and she just can't seem to trim it by herself. We see that a lot with dogs and cats, yeah. and she just needs to get it trimmed a little bit regularly, and that's why I, uh, I bring along my new vet. Uh, brilliant. <laughs> I think He's, that means, uh, uh, it yeah. means that I'll be doing the trimming then. Well, you're an expert in uh, trimming chipmunks' <laughs> nails, aren't you? <laughs> well, I will be after today. <laughs> <laughs> For Riaz, I think it's a little bit of a baptism of fire. OK, so I'm going to let Speedy out. She'll come out by herself, but it's a bit difficult to handle her. Absolutely, Just let's, a bit let's of try it. The moment the cage door opens... Good girl. Oh, Speedy is off. <laughs> She's gone under the bed. Scott, I think we've been outsmarting, mate. Catching Speedy's fun. Yeah, she is right in the middle. Her name should have definitely given it away. Oh, this should go for it, Raz, go for it. Go, be quick, be quick, be quick. Oh. <laughs> being outthought by a chipmunk here. There's a bit of a standoff that's going on. Hopefully we come out on top. Keep doing what you're doing, Riaz. Yes. Oh, and down she goes. I think she's down your left side. Finally, after a few minutes... Oh, she's back in a cage. You are joking. The cunning Speedy has the last laugh. The sooner we get her, we can have a look at that nail, so I think that's what I'm sort of focusing on. She's very fast. Oh. <laughs> Oh, Good girl. Careful. Here we go. Brilliant. Oh, she's so cute. So cute. She, she's absolutely adorable. I can see why you love them so much. And also, it was incredibly funny to get Riaz to run around like that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I'm ever going to live that down. All right, let's trim that little nail. Right. So with the Speedy, what we're going to try and do is carefully just cut the nail back down to normal length so she's more comfortable. Try that. That's beautiful. What do you think? Oh, that's brilliant. Thank you ever so much. Yeah, very good. Isn't it great that you do five years of vet school and then you can do a manicure? <laughs> <laughs> All right then, Speedy, I think you can go back. Beautiful girl. And be quick with that door. Yeah, I will do. Don't worry. <laughs> but suddenly... Oh, dear. There's a problem. When I went to put Speedy back into her cage, she collapsed and fell off her perch. Realised that she wasn't breathing and my heart was in my mouth the whole time. All right. She's okay. It's all right, I know. What's happening? 
can feel a heartbeat there. Yep. Okay, good girl. Absolutely heart stopping. She's okay. stressed. Yeah, yeah, she's stressed. These are the moments as a vet you dread. You're doing what seems to be a minor procedure on an animal and then they drop. My mind's racing, but I act very calmly. But at the same time, I'm thinking, what the hell just happened? Open the window. For a little creature, they're very prone to stress. She just needs to get a good gulp of breath. Hey, there you go, that's it. Good breath, good girl, good girl. Hmm? Is that normal when they get stressed, that's what happens? Um, no, that's not normal, no. But uh, she's basically fainted is what she's done. So, haven't you? Hey? Ah, oh, you can't imagine how I felt when he said she's breathing. I was so relieved because I had a flash in front of me thinking that that's it, I've lost my baby. Hey, you gave me a heart attack. You? I didn't expect anything like that to happen. Good girl, there's mummy. Look at mummy, look at that beautiful face. There oh, you go, and you're back. Good girl. Right, good girl. There we go. Let's put you there. Oh. There you go, you scared all of us. Whew. You're right. Yeah. I had a heart oh, attack baby, as well. No. I know, I know, I know. That was close, yeah. After the scare with Speedy, everyone is now apprehensive about the checkup on Chippy. About a week ago, I noticed her underside of her belly was um, slightly swollen. It looked really pink on one side and not so much on the other, so I'm guessing that there's something wrong there because otherwise it would be on both sides, right? If it was, yeah, so maybe yeah. we could check yeah, that out absolutely. as well. Yeah, absolutely. After the lessons learned with Speedy, I decided that this time around we were going to leave Chippy in her cage and try and capture us that way. Let me have a little feel back here. So can I get you just to hold that leg? Mm -hmm. That's it. And Riaz, if you hold yeah. that leg, nice and gentle, let's have a feel. Manpreet, I have found a, a, a lump. Okay. Um, it is a solid mass and it is present in her mammary tissue, basically the breast tissue of your chipmunk. Mm -hmm. So it looks quite angry. Okay. Yeah, that is a concern. She's my little baby, and uh, it's the size of a pea now. And we don't know if it's okay, if she'll be okay, or if it's something a bit sinister. Good girl. So I know you're very worried about your little princess, but we just need to take her to the practice, have that anaesthetic done, remove that nasty mass, and then wait and see what the results show. Okay, okay. brilliant. Thank you ever so much. All right, much. no worries. Thank you. No worries. Let's go. We had this traumatic experience with Speedy and I never thought that would happen with her. So there's every possibility something could happen with Chippy as well. All right, so we'll get off to the clinic now and I'll give you a call just as soon as she's woken up. She might go into shock. She might not react to the operation too well. I'm not sure. So I am really nervous. Hi, Kirsty. Oh. Hey, Kirsty. Oh, chipmunk. <laughs> chipmunk, Kirsty, Kirsty, meet, chipmunk. Meet the chipmunk. Oh, okay. <laughs> Come on, let's get you right. downstairs. Big day. Scott and Riaz have arrived back at the Richmond Hill practice with Chippy for her breast lump removal. Okay, guys. So with this, we have to be quite efficient because we've got a little mammal that's prone to stress, as we mm. certainly learnt this morning. Don't need that again. Riaz and Nurse Sam will be assisting with the down. procedure on the four-year-old chipmunk. Sound good? Sounds good. Yep, let's do it. Let's go for it. Anesthetics and surgery in small animals is always a risk, but chipmunks, they're so small and delicate, of course, it's even greater risk. So we need to make sure that with this procedure, it's as quick as it can be, and she can recover as quickly as she can. Go right up to five to start with, because she's light. With a lot of animals, we can actually give anaesthetics via an IV line or straight into their blood supply. But with the chipmunk, their blood vessels are very small. So instead, what we're going to do is an inhalation anaesthetic. She'll breathe that in, and then she'll be knocked out and ready for surgery. I think it's my least favorite way. Well, I'd like to see you try and get a vein <laughs> yeah. in this one. <laughs> I think that would be a challenge. Let's take her out and get her straight onto a mask. Okay. That's it. What I can see here is a very angry looking mammary mass. So she's got a little lump in her breast tissue, uh, which is quite concerning because she is an older chipmunk and therefore 
older people get cancer more regularly, unfortunately. And in this case, I think that might be what it is. So what we need to do is to remove it, but at the same time, remove enough, enough tissue around the outside that if it has spread a small amount, then at least we're taking it away. We're doing the job once and doing it right. Okay. Yeah, it's a, it's a hard lump and actually pretty big. So I've got the lump out completely and I can feel there's a nipple there and then underneath is this hard lump, uh, hopefully surrounded by healthy tissue. But we'll have to wait and see what the pathologists say. It's quite a big lump, isn't it, for a little chipmunk? It really is. I mean, if you think how big that is comparative to this mm. animal, it's about half the size of its head. Yeah. So for me, that's a pretty big lump. A big lump. The lump will now be sent to pathology. Scott won't be relaxing until the results are back. So as you say, Sam, we're not out of the woods yet. No. So this little one the cover. Wake up. Yes. Do you want to go straight in, back into a box? Yeah, that'd, that'd be, be great. great. Yeah, okay. could you? Thank you. OK. It's right next to you. Ooh. Ooh. What's that? It's amazing how quick they wake up, isn't it? Yeah, it's incredible. Fast metabolic rate. Okay. Good girl. Yeah, you're ready to go back in. You got there? Yeah. Good girl. Okay, just pop the lid on that. Right. Right. Good. No chipmunk deaths today. You take one of that. Hooray. I can't wait to deliver the news to Manpreet that Chippy has got through the procedure and has woken up beautifully. I know how worried she's been about this, but now I need to also tell her that that worry continues until we get the results of the pathology back from the lab. My oh, mum's going to be so relieved. Yes, yeah, she is. Hey? Yeah, she is. Sweetheart, hey, ready to see mummy? Hmm? 24 hours ago, Scott removed a mass from Chippy's breast, and the four year old chipmunk has made a good recovery. Okay. Should we go and see mummy then? Hey, let's go. Come on then. For Ona Manbreed, it's been a stressful separation from her precious girl. It's been a bit nerve wracking because, of course, I didn't know, you know, how, how the operation's going to go. So it's been a long wait. Here's Mummy, hey. Oh, hi. There's your little lady. Oh, hi, sweetheart. Say hi, Mama. Oh, bless. So surgery went well. Oh, brilliant. And we've removed that mass in its entirety, so now it's just a waiting game. We need to find out what it is. The pathologist will give us an idea of that, and then we work out if we should be worried or not. But the good news is at least that I've removed the whole thing and the tissue around it, so hopefully it's good news. Yeah. All right. Okay. I was so nervous before, but now it's such a big relief to have her finally back with me. I'm just looking forward to taking her back home. See ya. OK, bye-bye. Bye, all the best. Bye, Chippy. Scott will have the results of the tests in just a few days. Hello, baby. Mum loves you. Hi, Hi Manpreet, how, how are you? you? Good, Great to you. see you. you Scott has received the much. test results for Manpreet's four-year-old pet chipmunk. Hello, Chippy. How are you, sweetheart? Today he will deliver the news and check up on little Chippy. How's she been? She's been OK. She's been really good. Um, she was a bit quiet for the first few days. It looks like it's healed quite well. Mm -hmm. The only thing is that I do feel there's a little bit more of a a lump that's developed further down. And that wasn't there before? No. I never expected to find another lump. All I was doing was to make sure that the suture line had healed well and that the lump that I previously removed had gone completely. And the unfortunate thing is um, the results from the lump have come back um, and it's come back as a, a not a very nice type of tumour and it's already spread out into the tissue surrounding. <laughs> I think 
it's a good chance that sadly this will take her quite quickly. And the fact that it's already spread the way it has, it's really not good news at all, I'm afraid. I'm so sorry. Oh. Thing. So do you think she's in pain at the moment then? Or? I don't. I feel, oh, you're still very active, aren't you? Um, I don't think that she's in pain, um, but this tumour is likely to progress quite quickly. I really wanted it to be okay. Oh, no, I, I don't know in my mind. I just thought oh, she's had the operation and it's she'll gone be fine. And you've given us such a wonderful life. You really have. And what I love about you is that this is a little tiny fairy creature and people might go, oh, it's only a chipmunk, but it means so much more to you. Of course, she's my baby. She's it's like my little kid. I know. That's why it's so heartbreaking, because she's brought us so much joy in the last four years. She knows how much you love her, and I know how much you love her, and you just need to keep doing that, OK? Yeah. Because she's lived so much longer than she would have in the wild yeah. by being cared for so beautifully by you. OK? Yeah. And I'll be here. OK, so if you need to speak to me about it, if you want to... Just have a cry on a shoulder that I'm here. Thank you. Because I do know that this little creature, however small, has a big part of your heart. Mm, she does, definitely. Both of them. My baby. You've been such a sweet girl and such a good little patient. You'd never know, would you? <laughs> no, I know, exactly. She's so active. Mm. And She's such a good girl. And that's one thing you do have to take away, is that ignorance is, in fact, bliss. Mm. And right now, she's like, oh, look, I'm doing somersaults. Aren't I hilarious? And, oh, look, there's my mum, mm -hmm. and I love her. Bless. I tell her that every day, that I love her. Sometimes I think she probably understands, right? <laughs> of course she does. In Atlanta, Georgia, Dr. Arvid's next patient has arrived with teacher Faith and 20 young students from a local school. Hello, kiddos! <laughs> they are so cute! <laughs> they are so cute! The kids are hoping Dr. Arvid will be able to help their class bunny rabbit Milo after he developed a nasty lump on his jaw. And this one is Milo. That's Milo. Yeah. Milo has like a little pain right on his cheek and it's hurting him very bad. And it has a boo -boo on the face. He has a boo boo on the face, that's right. And it's my job as the doctor to make that boo boo go away. I'm really, really scared um, when he goes to surgery. Well, thank you so much for bringing Milo and um, we're going to take care of Milo today and get him feeling better, okay? All right, we'll see you later, okay? Bye-bye, okay. we'll see you later. <laughs> Rabbits are notorious for developing abscesses. Um, it can be any type of infection, but in this case, I'm very suspicious that it may be due to a tooth root, which are problematic. So let me get him out. Okay, here. <laughs> it's a good boy. So what I'm doing now is I'm just kind of feeling this abscess and I'm feeling the mandible, which is the bone, the jaw bone. And it's definitely right there. And you can I see think it's in pain. painful yeah. for him. Yeah. Just even touch touching it, it hurts. Yeah. And if we're dealing with an infected tooth root, that poses an even bigger problem because not only do I have to deal with the abscess, but I have to deal with that tooth. And teeth and rabbits are hard to get to just because of the anatomy of their mouths. Rabbits are very fragile. And a lot of times because their mouths are so small, the space that you work in is very limited, making your job very tough. I can tell that, you know, he's really loved and that's why I'm gonna do everything in my power to make sure that we get him taken care of, okay? Is that okay with you? Yeah? 
<laughs> I'm gonna take some x-rays, take a look and see what's going on. But if it's a tooth root abscess causing this, it's gonna be a nightmare. This is what we're dealing with here. That whole mass here is the abscess. You can see the bone here. So you see how smooth that is? Yeah. You see how rigid yeah. that is there? Uh -huh. That's an indication that it is in the bone. Wow. What I wanted to say when I first saw it was holy moly, look at that abscess, but I didn't want to scare the owner. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so it'll be okay. It'll be okay. So try to enjoy the rest of your day. I know it's going to be hard not to think about it, but just do the best you can. Uh -huh. and. Um, but I'll be in touch with you as soon as we're done. Okay? okay? Thank you. All right. There's a lot of challenges that I'm facing today, and I'm gonna do my best to get Milo home, especially to those little kids. I gotta get the tongue here. But before the procedure can get underway, Arvid first has to anaesthetize the frisky bunny. Let him relax a little bit. So yeah, he's still not all the way down yet. He's a fighter. Nope. We'll let him go down just a little bit more. Very feisty. I gave him his sedative, and of course, he doesn't want to go all the way out. So I'm gonna have to give him a little bit more so that we can get the trach tube in him and get started with this procedure. So now the trach tube is in, thank goodness. about to make my incision to remove this abscess. All this is one large ball of pus. It's very thick and cheesy-like. So this abscess is a doozy. It's already just eating away at the bone and creating what, what we call a moth-eating appearance. And there's pus deep down in the crevices. It's not something that's gonna be quick, so you just gotta take your time and be very methodical. So I got the abscess out. That was a job in and of itself. Now, I'm taking out the culprits, which are these two lower incisor teeth. This is the lower mandibular incisor, which is the lower jaw tooth that was causing a lot of the abscess. So we are all done. And now the next critical part of this procedure is waking Milo up from anesthesia. He needs to wake up in a quiet place because if they wake up in a place that's stressful, it can be too much stress and they can have a heart attack. So we definitely don't want that. I'm just here waking up the bunny, making sure he wakes up with someone and he stay warm and not bounce around or anything like that. Welcome back, buddy. Good morning. It was a little touch and go here and there, but I got through it. So now we gotta get Milo ready so that his owner can pick him up this evening and I can get back into the good graces of those little kids. Here he is. <laughs> Didn't want to put him in with Mikey just yet, but we got him, put him in a little box and uh, he's doing good. I really stepped out of my comfort zone on this one. First time doing this procedure on a rabbit, but that's how you grow. He is really, really tough and still just as feisty. Milo. <laughs> <laughs> Look at him. Oh my gosh, Milo. Hey, buddy. Yeah, he did fantastic. Oh, oh my goodness. Don't jump out. <laughs> don't jump out. Hi, buddy. I'm so excited that um, that Milo is back to being 
Milo because I was in, I was expecting a sick kind of my, Milo. He seems fine. Oh, yeah. I'm happy. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Oh my God, I'm so happy. And Faith's not the only one who's happy to have Milo back in her arms. I'm happy that he will be healthy again. And I'm proud of him. It's not every day I'm out in this part of the country, but this is no ordinary case. A piglet born with only one trotter. She's clearly beaten the odds just to get to this point. So I'm gonna see if I can help her out. Chris is in Carrara, about two and a half hours southwest of Brisbane. He's responding to a call for help from some big-hearted farmers. They're worried about Stubby, a very special baby. How are you? Hi, how are you? It's Belle, right? Yep. G'day, nice how are you going? Hey, nice to meet you. Tim. Tim. How are you, Tim? Now, where's our patient? She's inside oh, still. <laughs> oh, wow. So this is our little Stubby. And she was born without three trotters. Wow. Look at that face. She is. Just beautiful. Extraordinary. I pick up Stubby and realise that, you know, it's one thing to hear about a piglet born with only one trotter. It's another one to have it in your arms. And look at her right now, she's got one hell of a struggle on her hands. Was she born like this? Yeah, she was. Yeah. Yeah, it's the first time we've ever had born like this. I don't even know if she would have got through the night because she didn't have the trotters to hold onto her teat and she would have just got pushed out of the way. So I held her up to her mum's nipple. Wow. So you knew straight away she just couldn't survive? She wouldn't have, no. Stubby, she's only been in our home for three weeks, but she's already a huge part of the family and a huge part of my heart. What worries me is the fact that without those trotters, her life is going to be truly limited. Yeah. I want to be able to help you yeah. and, and see if we can find some sort of solution here that's going to be a long-term fix for her. Yeah, because I don't want her to be in pain or anything. No. I want her to have a good little life. Yeah. Our vet said to put Stubby down, so Chris is our last resort. At the moment, she, she's truly up against it. Yeah. Because, you know, I, I've seen animals with one leg to form, but to have three like this, yeah. Yeah, it's a big issue. There's no doubt that Stubby is right up against it. I mean, normally addressing a problem in one or two legs, that's a big challenge. But with three, she's facing an uphill battle. Yeah, the first thing I'd like to see is just how well she's getting around mm -hmm. right now. Sure. That gives us a good starting point. Yep. And then from there, we can work out exactly what we're facing and what we need to look at. What I find interesting is when she does walk, she doesn't ever get her legs even close to being vertical. She's got to think twice about where she puts her foot down. Mm. And I think she's doing that because she knows that those, those legs of hers yeah. are very sensitive. They don't have the padding underneath. They don't have that hoof to, to support her. And each little twig and each, I guess, little pebble that she hits would actually hurt her. My concern is that if Stubby was born with these defects, then there's a chance she could have others. So a full check over, it's essential. The inside of the mouth looks okay, no cleft palate. Her neck, her ribs, they all feel fine. And when I listen around her heart, I'm hearing very clear beats, which is important. So really, so far so good. That's good. That's good. good. Mm. But we need to get to these legs though. So you can see she's getting these little pressure sores yeah. here. So that's where she's contacting the ground when she takes those steps. Mm -hmm. And this one's a little bit more raw too. Yeah. So while she's she's managing to get around right now, you know, th there are some warning signs that, that there potentially is some trouble brewing there. Yep. The issue we've got is without those trotters, her life is gonna be truly limited. Mm because she just can't get around and carry around any sort of weight yeah. without them. And she's gonna grow. Yeah. The enormity of little Stubby's problem is beginning to sink in. I'm just worried that, you know, we can't do anything to help her and that, you know, I can't provide her a life that, you know, she deserves. So we need to find a way to help her support her growing weight. 
I'm not do sure. Do you have anyone to use? Yeah. I'm glad you do. I do. As Stubby grows, her weight is going to become immense and those stumps just structurally won't be able to support her. Plus, she only has a thin layer of skin covering them. So right now, the pressure is on to make sure this solution is one that works. All right, Belle, you may have the most important job <laughs> of all here. Mm -hmm. You have to keep that little mess still. What I want to do, first of all, is clean up these feet here. The energetic baby has captured the hearts of owners Belle and Tim who are desperate for her to have a future. Good girl. So what we're going to do is actually going to cover up these feet here so we can't afford them to have any infections there that could mm -hmm. get any worse. All right, so what we're going to do now mm -hmm. is all about trying to give her some sort of durability and some yep. sort of comfort with those feet. Okay. So if we don't protect them, those pressure sores are going to develop into big open wounds. Yep. And as she gets bigger, that's going to be catastrophic for her. Basically, I'm trying to mimic exactly what nature didn't provide Stubby with. So normally, she would have a layer of fat on the base of her foot and then the harder material over the top of the trotter that acts as protection. So instead of that, I've got the padding, which is going to provide the cushioning. And then on top of that, the bandage provides the protection. All right. We're ready for a fitting. Right. Come on. Put her head up. Yeah. Let's sneak one on the back here. Yeah, OK. Oh, we can. Yeah. Like a glove. Beautiful. So now we'll take this one on. You're not being hurt. I think Chris's idea is awesome. I'm open to anything that lets Stubby just live a normal life. Okay. Moment of truth. So, we now have <laughs> three feet covered. Yep. So, she's all bandaged up, but the big question is, can she walk? Basically, if she can't walk, then she just won't be able to survive. It's a big moment. It is. <laughs> a lot of work going into this. Yep. So, let's see how these new feet go. Come on, it's all right. If this doesn't work, the tiny piglet has no future. They feel a bit different, sweetie. Yeah. Chris puts Stubby on the ground and she just kind of stops for a second. Stubby, what are you doing? And then she starts taking steps and you can just see the look on her face like, oh my God, I'm not in any pain and just the freedom she has to walk and that just meant the world to me. The thing about these is, they're not necessarily all terrain and all weather. It's something that I reckon is worth trying here. <laughs> Rubber stoppers of the base of chairs. These what do you think, Stubbs? could become an all-terrain form of transport. So I just wonder if we put her little foot in there. Yep. Look who has a new trotter. their own rubber boot. That is pretty special. The local hardware store isn't where I normally start looking for a solution to a piglet's problem. But funnily enough, these rubber stoppers look to be perfect. With her little gumboots on, I can't see why she can't get around the farm just like the other piglets. Oh, that's pretty good. That is. <laughs> She's awesome, eh? She's looking stoked. Look at her. That's seconds after she's had them on, so yeah. this will take hours, it'll take days for her to get used to walking them, but she'll be running in them. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what do you think, Stubbs? Obviously, in the future, as she does get bigger, she is going to need more help. She'll need bigger rubber shoes, but in Bell and Tim, she's got some very handy allies. Thank you very much. No worries at all. Thank you. Thank you. My pleasure. Before Chris came, we didn't know what the future would be for Stubby, but after he's seen her and spent so much time with her, it seems like her future's going to be really bright.